our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, you know what those stripes are? That is the cat of nine tails that they whipped Jesus with. The Bible says that they whipped his back so hard, it looked upon like a field that was, was dug up by plows by a farmer. And yet, what does Daytona Beach for in 2015 after the day the anniversary of those stupid towers coming down? He is despised and rejected of men, but woohoo towers! But forget God. Well, forget those towers. Look at your soul. All those people that died in those towers are in heaven or hell. And they're in heaven, they're saying, come to us. And they are in hell. Luke 13, don't come here. Believe on Jesus. Tell them, preacher. That's a testimony that Jesus told about a man in hell. He said, send the preachers to my family. Send them out in the streets. Tell them not to come to this place. And there's one thing we learn about 9-11. We learn about 9-11. Man will die in the hands of religion. Religion wants blood. Jesus shed his blood that you may have life. Religion wants your blood, wants you dead. Yet Jesus died. He shed his blood that you may have life. That is the difference between religion and Jesus Christ. Religion says, give me cash, check, or money, or, and Jesus says, give me your soul. Believe on me. And religion says, give, 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 give. And Jesus says, I gave, gave, gave. Religion says, judge not, least ye be judged. And the Bible says, come on to me. All in our head be laven. That is the difference between religion and Jesus Christ. And yet, he has despised and rejected a man. Only a few will grab these pieces of paper that will tell you in your own time personally what Jesus Christ. These papers we hold that we will give to you free. We'll give them to you free. We'll explain to you more what you need to do with Jesus. They don't have my name. They don't have my address. They don't have where you can send me $50 or $0.50. Cents. I don't want your money. I want you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I like that. Saved. There goes my voice. Saved. Almost sound like a television preacher. Guy. Be saved. But there's one difference. I am bringing you to hope. I am bringing you the Son of God. I am bringing to you God today to be saved. Oh, there's that. And let me show you on the same book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. You're a meanie. You're yelling at us. You don't love us. I wouldn't be here if I didn't love you. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, I didn't see concern for your soul. If I didn't see where you were going, I wouldn't be here. Where are your popes? Where are your Jehovah Witnesses? Where are your Mormons? Where is Islam chopping off our heads? I'm oh, sorry. Come now. This is God speaking Isaiah right into you. And God says, come. I don't know if I can hear my voice. I know you can all hear. I've had my secret agents walking through and I know you can be I know you can hear me. And I am telling you that God says, Come. Come now. You may not live tomorrow. You may not live this afternoon. An airplane may fall from heaven right now and kill us all. You may get hit by a Florida driver. God may tweak your heart to give you a stroke. Of the million ways to die, God says, come now. I've got a Bible. And I will show you 
off privately with my family on what the Bible says you need to do. Come now. Let us. Now that's not the lettuce that you can buy across the street. That's green plant life that's going to die. That is what Cain offered God. That's the lettuce that God said that Cain said to God, Here, God, take my lettuce. And God says, I don't want that. I want the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This is the lettuce that God says, Let you and me. Let the Holy God, the Almighty God, the Father, come down and reach you and meet with you and sit down with you. For Revelation chapter 3 says, Jesus stands at the door knocking. And if any man will open unto him, I will come in and sup with him. God is reaching out to you folks today with an invitation. Come now, meet with that Holy Father. Even though you are a sinner, come and meet with Him. Find out what His grounds are for salvation. He's reaching out to you in love and care. He does not want you to go to hell. He's long-suffering, but you do not know when your end lies. He says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins, there's that sin problem again. Your main trouble is you are a sinner. And I don't know what the sin is in your life, but you've got a sin that may not be my sin, but you've got a sin in your life that is separating you from God. And failure to put that sin under the blood will cast you off into hell. Is it really worth it? Do you really want to go to hell and see the Marlboro Man? Do you really want to enter the gates of hell to the Bud Man? The King of Beers? Instead of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? You've got to come with the fact is that the main trouble you've got, the main controversy that God has with you today is you are a sinner. And you can't step into a closet with a priest and get it washed away with cash check or prayers. Imagine, 14 Hail Mary full of grapes is going to get you to heaven where Jesus died and suffered. For what? If you can pray your way through on twiddly beads. I can make fun of that religion because I was in that religion for 18 years of my life. I was a dedicated in that religion. Only thing I didn't do in that religion, I didn't cite the priest. I wasn't an altar boy, thank God. And you're going to trust them people with your soul? You can't even trust them with your children, people. And yet Jesus said, suffer the little children and come unto me. He won't abuse them. Wake up and smell the religious poop. Though your skin sins shall be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. There's only one thing that will cleanse you of your sins. And it's not cash. It's not who you are. Because we already said, you're a sinner. It's nothing you can do. If you can do it, then why did Jesus already suffer and die for you? If you can do it, why is there a gospel? Come on. If you can do it, why does the Bible say, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Walking little old ladies across the street ain't going to get you into heaven. How you doing, brother? Right, thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That is the only access you have to God the Father. You go to God with any 
anything else and he's not listening. The door is shut. Satan is listening to you. Satan is deceiving you. Yes, there is a Satan. Look around the world. Paul said about Israel, which I believe 100% true, he says, My heart is desire that all Israel might be saved. I pray for the Jews. But if I can change that commandment without changing the Bible, if I can put a personal testimony on that verse that Paul wrote to us, without changing the Bible, my heart's desire that all you will turn to Jesus Christ as, their, as your personal Savior. I ain't out here out of hatred. I ain't out here screaming. you got to hear me. I ain't here because I have to be here. I ain't here to ruin your day. I'm here to with the blessed words and the glorious hope of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you may believe on Him, and that when you close your eyes to death or the Lord comes back today, that you may be seated with God in heavenly places to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. That you will know that God loves you, yes. But God's a holy God. He can't allow a sinner into His presence. And without the blood of Jesus Christ, no matter what you do, no matter what you think, you are still a sinner without the blood of Jesus Christ. If you don't have the payment, you will not go in. That's my heart's desire. I may be loud, but you got to hear me. God has blessed me with a wonderful, loud voice that I am always reminded about because of this type of ministry that He has provided for me. You know, the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am amidst them. There are two or three people gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know there are some saved people out there, there saved people that walk by, and they praise the work being done. Listen, Jesus Christ is here, you guys are my church. And I don't even have an offering play. I just have preaching. So you can't say it's not the money. You can't say it's, it's not the repetition, it's not the honor. I'm not, no one's come over here and take our pictures and put us on the front page or anything like that. I am here because I love you and God loves you and He wants you to believe on His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God has commanded me. The only way I am here is God has commanded me to go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's the only thing that like, forces me to do what I'm doing, but I do it out of love. I hold the Bible, the Word of God, displaying to you what you need to do, what you must do. And yet, if you continue to reject, and if God gives you grace and mercy to live another day, and yet you choose to reject, be known to you that you have heard the Word of God. And you are without excuse. And there may be at the great white throne judges, you may see my ugly face again, and you may hear the loud voice of my voice again, as God pronounces damnation against you because you didn't listen the first time. Because your excuse will be before God, I already know, I never knew. Stolly hammered up in front of her. Come on, get up here. On September 12, 2015, did you preach at the farmer's market? Yes, Lord, I did. I don't have a watch to know what time it is. Did you tell them about my son? Yes, I did, Lord, loud and clear. Yeah, I know you did it loud. Everybody says you were loud. I got thousands and thousands of people that tell me that you got a loud mouth. And you proclaimed my son. Yes, I did, Lord. I proclaimed that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he will turn to you and say, you heard. You had the chance. And you rejected my son. Oh, Lord, I didn't 
didn't like his character. Lord, I didn't like his voice. Lord, I didn't like him. Tough. He had my son. And the question is, the most important question asked in the Bible is, what are you going to do with this man called Jesus? What are you going to do? Don't be too quick to answer if it's no. Give yourself time. Come and get one of these pieces of paper that explains the gospel, that explains what Jesus has done for you before you say no. At least come out and try. At least take an effort to get one of these papers and find out later what God expects from you. But if you say no, and you die in your sin, I am innocent. And you will be the guilty one. And it's sorry that I look around, I see people passing money and getting fruits and vegetables, and I see that Isaiah 53 says he's respired, injected a man. How it breaks my heart. Yeah, but that's the same thing they did to Jesus. That's the same thing they did to Jeremiah. Our hope is that you will come to Christ. You've heard the words. I try to be out here every week, unable with my job. But we try to be out here when we can. I know it's a disturbance to you. I know it's a hindrance to you. I know you're not getting all the full money that you can get because over there they got a street preacher and over there they don't, so we'll go over there. I know, I know, I know. I know Jesus is a hindrance to your life today. I know my big mouth is a hindrance to you today. I know that. But don't let it be a hindrance for all eternity. If you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved today, up in heaven, in New Jerusalem, as you're praising the one that died for you, as you're praising the one that, that made you, your creator, you'll say, I'm glad he interrupted the farmer's market. I am so glad that he came with the gospel. By the glory, hallelujah, let's say praise, praise the Lord. And, but in hell... You will wish you got up from that table and bypassed George Washington and bypassed Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. And if you would only reach out to the blood that could save you and realize once in eternity in the gates of hell, you can't turn back. Oh, was that watermelon really worth it? Because you're going to want water in heaven. You can't get it. Never mind the melon. I have grace and hope enough to realize that if the Lord carries, you may believe on tomorrow. You may believe on Him next week. You may believe on Him next month, maybe next year. Maybe only a seed was planted today. It's worth it all. Maybe I am watering the plant. Maybe you are out there and you're afraid and today is your day to be a fruit of righteousness. The Bible says, come now, come on out. I'll turn off the mic, I'll turn off the camera, and I will deal with you with the Bible, lovingly, showing you what God expects. Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Go about your business. Look to God. If you have a little skepticism, and maybe God will hear you say, Lord, what, is that guy really preaching the truth? Does he really care? And if your heart is searching too, God will give you the answers. Just don't turn away when he does give you the answer. 
surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, because I have believed since April 1987, I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. On April 1987, I had my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and it will never be erased, but my sins will be erased by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, but never my name. And never if your name is put down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name will not be erased, but your sins can be. It's all about a sin condition. And it don't matter what sin. It doesn't matter who has sinned. It's have you been to the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for cleansing? Have you been to the cleansing power? Can God see, say to you, I will pass over Him because of the blood of the crucified one? Life does not begin at 40, 50, 60, 70. Life begins at Calvary. Calvary is a place where Jesus Christ took His cross and died and was buried and arose from the grave that you may have life and have life more abundantly. That Easter story is all about your soul. Today is the day of salvation. Today, let us now. Come now. God's reaching out to you. Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. As we close, as I close, let us do our memory verse, Acts 16.31. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's plain and simple. And that's the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved.